everyone, before we get started, I just want to let you all know that I'm currently having a giveaway on my Patreon. Do you want to win a custom Snap Squad made by me of your choice? All you have to do is be a Patreon for your chance to win. The winner will be drawn on the 28th of April. Good luck! Hey everyone, and today I'll be making a Hypo Spiner using this Jurassic World Snap Squad Spinosaur. So the Hypo Spino is of course from the game The Isles, and I'm going to start off by shaving off all the little numbers and trademark codes on this little guy. Now I'm going to make some holes for these tiny little magnets because a hyperspino has a splitting jaw and the only way I could think of this to work is by making the jaw detachable. So now I'm just marking where the magnets go. And these are doll magnets I got in Japan, they're very very strong. So now I'm just using my Dremel to drill in the holes for the magnets. Trying very hard not to break through the jaw. And that's the magnets installed now. Now the sculpting, and of course I'm using a two-part epoxy called Millie Part. It is a two-part clay that sets hard in about two to three hours. Um, it's very very strong clay and I love working with it. So I'm using my silicone tools here to shape it and water to smooth it out. So now we begin work on the spine. So I'm just covering the whole spine in a sheet of the two-part epoxy and then I'll start carving in the different spine details the hypospino has. Of course I'm referencing the whole time. So now that we have the clay all smoothed onto the spine, I'm going to start carving in the actual details using my silicon tools, of course. Or my pointy spiky tool first to get the lines down. <laughs> Now we're coming in with the silicon tools. Silicon tools are brilliant for working with this clay because nothing really sticks to silicon, so this silicon is very good to sculpt with because the clay just does not stick to it. So I'm just running my silicon tools down through it just to round out the edges. I don't want them sharp, I sort of want the edges rounded. Now I'll be coming with, through with a toothbrush at the end to give it sort of a gritty sort of effect. Pretty scaly sort of effect, I guess you would say. So now I bring in the tail armor. Tiny fiddly little bits of sculpting to do over a moving tail that is so tiny. This was very, very hard to do. <laughs> that tail did not want to stop moving. So I'm just using my fingers here to pinch the tips, just to get the shape I want. So I think it is about time for question of the day. Would you ever consider sculpting a feathered dinosaur? Heck yeah! Definitely! I have different ideas of how to make feathers, everything from using foam and bendable clay to actual feathers. I would love to work on a feathered dinosaur, just gotta wait for the right time to come around. So yeah, definitely would love to make a feathered dinosaur. So continuing on with the sculpting now. Tail almost done. Now I'm using my silicon tool here just to bridge in the edges a bit more since when I smoothed them out they sort of smoothed over the edges a bit. So I'm recarving them back in and rounding them off again. A lot of back and forth when you're sculpting, a lot of back and forth. And there's the toothbrush again to give it a good texture. So now I've got to make tiny, tiny little spikes for the shoulders. 
these were hard to do because they're so so tiny <laughs> so now I've sculpted the jaw and installed magnets and I'm carving in some scales now so it's just a flat bit of clay that I've stuck a magnet in and lined it up with the magnet on the jaw. And now I'm just carving in some scales. And I've put in the holes for the teeth. In preparation for the teeth when I make them anyway. Because <laughs> you've got to make them separately, otherwise they just break off and during the sculpting process. So this is the jaw in action and I've base coated the body. Now it's time to make the teeth. So the jaw has set and I'm now mixed up another batch of the two-part epoxy and I'm making the teeth. And I'm just slipping them in into the holes that I pre-made and then I'm sealing the holes over by blending the clay over it. It's a very slow, tedious process, but it's got to be done. You've got to have the teeth. And there's the jaw done. So now I'm building the environment box. So I've painted the box grey and I'm now building the fence. I'm using skewers and I'm just gluing them down with E6000. So this is a texture paint I'm using now. This is a sand texture paint from Citadel. And I'm using my silicon tool and my sculpting tool just to spread it and uh, flatten it out. So this is just a pencil box I picked up from a junk store. Or a op, uh, $2 shop, I guess other countries call them. We call them junk stores, junk stores here. <laughs> so there's the sand down and now I'm using armature mesh to build a fence. And I'm just using my pen here just to draw where I want to cut. So kind of a crude way of measuring, I guess. <laughs> And yes, everyone who watched the previous video um, of me making a mistake of putting the fence down before I painted it, I am making that same mistake here because I was making all three boxes at the same time. So I'm sorry in advance for those who are screaming at the screen right now. Yes, I made the same mistake twice. <laughs> so I'm just folding the mesh around the poles before I painted them. And I'm using super glue to uh, secure the mesh to the poles before I painted them. <laughs> and now I realize my mistake and I'm painting them through the mesh, which is very hard to do. <laughs> it also means I have to paint the fence to blend in my terrible paint job. <laughs> so now I'm using a wash, a brown wash from Citadel, and I'm sort of dripping it down the edges and covering the box in it to give the sort of grey cement look, a gritty, worn down look. I'm coming with a second layer here and I'm just dribbling it again just to give it an extra darkness to some areas. And that's the box almost done. So now I'm painting some rocks. It's time to build the environment a bit better. So these are rocks I've made with the leftover two-part epoxy. Don't want to waste that stuff, so I make rocks with it. And then I use them later on in stuff like this. 
just making sure everything still fits and now I'm coming in with a Mod Podge to use as a glue for my grass that I'll be adding which is kind of a I know it's a Warhammer terrain grass but I'm pretty sure it's just terrain grass you can buy from a hobby shop and then I just sprinkle it on now the painting so I'm coming in with a whole craft light grey and just I've watered it down a bit so it doesn't cl clog up all the moving parts and I'm just brushing all over I think I did about three coats and had to be very mindful not to clog up all the moving parts so now I'm going back to the box and I've cut printed out some labels and now I'm cutting them out and I'll be sticking them down using Mod Podge and then I'll be sealing the box in Liquitex high gloss varnish and then sealing it again in Mr. Superclear. So now I'm coming in with a darker grey from Citadel and I'm building up the layers of grey that the Hypo Spino has. I'm using a dry brush effect at the edges of the colour change just to give it a more natural look. very trying at times painting with all these moving parts <laughs> so now I'm just coming in and dopping in some little grey dots that the or freckles that the hypospino has very cute now we do the claws <laughs> in Citadel black I'm using a high flow from Hallcraft. No special reason that I'm using a high flow, it's just the this particular paint goes on in one layer, saves me having to do many layers in paint on the teeth. Kinda want to keep the teeth smooth. Now the tiny teeth on the splitting jaw. coat of yellow <laughs> I had to do quite a number of coats in this yellow it just did not want to do full coverage for some reason I guess that's normal for yellows though <laughs> Now I'm coming in with a lighter creamer grey and I'm just adding it to the areas I think need a bit of a pink touch, like the inside of the jaw. And now we're going over with a nice brown wash to bring out all the detail. This is where the spinous, uh, the hyperspino really starts to take shape. Well I believe so anyway, I really love the wash effect, brings out all the detail. I can't forget the splitting jaw. Now I'm adding a little touch of orange to the center of the eye just to give it a transition of color. And I'm going back to the yellow to again add another layer of sort of color effect. I think it gives more life. Now the tedious part of doing in the pupils. 
I make it look easy because it's sped up, but trust me, I really take my time with this. And I'm using my dopper tool here just to add some eye whites. Now I'm using Liquid Tex High Gloss Varnish to the outside of the teeth and the eyes. I can't do the inside of the mouth or the inside of the teeth in the snap jaw because if I do it sticks the jaw shut. So just the outside. And that's him done and this is the jaw in action. I'm very very happy with how it turned out and if you are interested in owning this little guy he's currently up for auction on eBay the auction ends on April 15th so if you're interested I'll leave the link below hopefully this little guy can find a home this is my first time actually trying to sell one of my little sculptures so yeah thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed this and good luck to anyone who decides to enter the auction bye <laughs>